ba ba ba. Five tips to get ahead at work. Five tips to get ahead at work. Another article from the BBC. I haven't watched this actually, so I'm going to watch this directly with you guys, and we're going to break this down and see what they're talking about. See if there's any facts or if there's any um, made up shit to do with this. Because again, I really say, you know, I mentioned quite a lot on here. I fucking detest having to work, but I do love to work because it allows me the ability to do the thing that I love to do, which is stuff like this. But there's also, I'm also very aware of the things that you have to do at work in order to maintain a good relationship with your colleagues with your soon senior supervisors with your managers and with the people that work around you you know there's things that you have to do little 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 kind of you know trinkets like you know going out for lunch sometimes and be hanging out with them for a beer little things you have to do in order to make sure that you have good harmony with your colleagues so let's see what bbc say about this and let's see if we can um, add on to any of the things that we're talking about here do, 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 do. <laughs> Oh, this is sort of like one of those women. Oh, it's a women thing. Okay, women. Okay, so so okay, so it's about women mostly. But let's see if we can get anything from it. Now work all over the world. Here I'm going to talk about five of those behaviors that most commonly get in women's ways. The first behavior is a reluctance to claim your achievements, expecting others to spontaneously notice and reward your contributions and your hard work. Um, I wouldn't say that specifically. I wouldn't say the the inability to um speak up to the things that you've done is necessarily a woman thing. I think I think that's for most people. Most people are quite, especially British people, we're quite shy. Americans is different. I, I think I've told this story a few times, but I'll tell it on here. But when I first went to New York for my first kind of boys trip, which was maybe early two thousands, maybe two thousand two, two thousand three, maybe around then. Um, went to New York for my first kind of, you know, boys trip that you do with all your friends and shit. It was like 15 of us. Like, it's a completely crazy, insane journey. But one thing I remember taking back from it was that American confidence, right? That American ego that we don't have here. We're a bit more, we're a bit proper. We're a little bit, um, we're, we're polite. Um, we're very reserved and all that shit. But America is the complete opposite of us, right? Very, very bombastic, very loud and in your face in a good way. And also very proud of the stuff they've done. So whenever we'd go to like a sceney kind of event, I think we went to like a 10 deep party. We went to some other kind of, uh, some other gallery stuff. But the stuff that we go to here in the UK, right? You go to an art exhibition, you go to a store release party for a capture collection they're doing, you know, the standard streetwear culture sort of stuff. We went to one and one, one thing I re remember was a random guy or girl instantly within five minutes of me meeting them or talking to them, giving me their pitch, right? I am so-and-so, I'm from this place, I'm currently doing this, I have an agency, I have a brand, I currently sing, I'm a DJ, what do you do? Quickly looking to see who can, and not in a kind of douchey LA way where they want to extract value, but more so as in like, this is what I can do if you've got something for me and I, that you want me to do, let me know, here's my card. As in LA way, it's a bit more like you scratch my back, I scratch yours, right? In LA, if if, you t if, if the person comes up to you and tells you they're a comedian and you have nothing to do in the entertainment industry, they're going to quickly find a way to kind of get out of the conversation. In New York, they're just going to tell you what they do so that in the hope that you can kind of put them on. And we don't do that here in the UK, which kind of leads back into work, right? If, you don't, if, if, you, if you're not able, like how many of your friends do you not know that they have, they do something on the side, whether it's DJing, whether it's doing comedy, whether it's, I don't know, fencing, whether it's running, you have no idea because they don't necessarily bring it up because they're a bit shy of bringing it up. And then the people, think about it, people in your workplace who are very quick to tell you what they do and what they're getting up to on the weekend or things they do outside of work, what do you think of them honestly? You think they're a bit of wankers, right? You think they're a bit of a wanker, they're a bit full of themselves. It's not just not a British thing to do. So I think in the UK, by and large, it's not just a women thing. I think when it comes to the workplace, especially if you're working in a big team, especially if it's a big creative team, it's spaces I've worked in in terms of marketing and stuff like that, it's very difficult to put your hand up and say you did what you did and what you brought to the table because things are moving so fast and it's, it's a quote-unquote collaborative workplace. And kind of like at the end of the day, you know, the person's going to take the 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 victory or the credit is going to be the you know the main head, the main marketing manager, the main leader of your group. And obviously, if you guys do a successful campaign as a team, you will take collective responsibility. You take collective praise for it. But I guess when you move on to the next place or your next job, that's where it's really important for you to claim the work that you did and say, no, I was really instrumental in making up the name, in positioning us with this brand, in um, thinking about this strategic approach, in doing the communication that way. That's why you have to be really, um, um, really, really gung-ho about it. And maybe, for another extent, if you want to get ahead at the workplace you're currently working in, it's also important to maybe just note down what you did um, as you're going through it. Because I think I've done, I've kind of had the thing of, no, I don't I remember what I did. No, you don't. You When time goes by, you won't remember jack shit. So 
as you're doing projects or as you're doing campaigns, maybe have a notepad that you're just jotting down what is actually your con- what have you contributed to the thing, um, whether it's um, creating a deck, whether it's helping out with the presentation, whether it's um, calling your prospective clients or partnership people, write down what you've done. So then when it comes to negotiating your pay later on, because I'm, I'm assuming that's what this whole video is about, you have something to kind of reference back to. What are you paying attention to? And what I often hear is, I'm not good at that at all. And when I ask them, why aren't you good? I hear one of two responses. The first is, I would think that if I do good work, people should notice. They probably should, but I don't think it's going to happen in today's workplace. The other thing I hear... That doesn't happen also in kind of creative fields, right? People, I hear people say that often, even in sports. I don't worry, they'll find you if you're good enough. No. Nah. That's there's part of that is true. Like, I guess if you're let's let's go into athletics. If you're a, or sports, if you're like a, a really talented footballer that's actually smashing it in the men's Saturday league, there will come a time where somebody will eventually see that oh, this kid's like way better than everyone that's on this pitch, right? That plays it every week. This guy needs to needs to get signed up. But you have to put yourself in a position for people to see you. You have to go to these matches. You have to go to these games. You have to sign yourself up, pay your subs. You know, you have to kind of be be out there. And this idea that you can kind of just do it from the distance is like. It's a little bit naive, I think, in my experience. In my experience, anyway. Here is, if I have to act like that obnoxious jerk down the hall to get noticed, I'd rather not get noticed. And that's problematic because it behaves in either or way of thinking exactly. that is going to get in your way. If you set yourself up, either you're obnoxious and constantly talking about yourself, or you just hang back and hope others notice, you've got a kind of no-win place to be. And am I am I the only person I guess that's actually a bit impressed? I guess a little bit jealous when you meet people that are super obnoxious and really self absorbed. There's a part of me that wants to have a little bit of that self confidence, especially when you meet somebody. We've all done it. We've all met somebody in our lives who's obnoxious, self absorbed, and in your eyes, they have no reason to be right. They're obnoxious and self absorbed about really limited things, right? They're extremely limited in their talent and extremely limited in their ability to do a particular job. They're just extremely limited. And you're like, how the fuck are you so self-confident of yourself and you're not having anything to back it up? But then I get, whenever I think that, it's all making switches into like, wow, man, I'm envious of that. I wish I could have that kind of, um, if I wish I could look at myself that way. And I guess for the most creative people, for the people that are most, um, who would probably have the most potential, there is part of you that is quite self-loving in general. But I also think it's quite dangerous, as this lady's pointed out. You have to take bits of that obnoxiousness, bits of that self-absorbed person and apply it to your life and have those kind of character traits in you. Because again, if you don't talk highly of yourself, if you're not out there promoting yourself, nobody's going to do it for you. Nobody. That's a stonewall guarantee. For example, you might identify, you know, I think that my boss doesn't really understand how well-connected I am in this organization. So I think what I'm going to do is once a week, I'm going to shoot him a quick email that just summarizes the main people that I've managed to talk to that week. I have seen this be remarkably successful for women. Really? It sounds a bit like shit advice. The second behavior anyway, what's this? is the disease to please. That is hoping and wanting everyone to think you are a wonderful and always nice person. Now, this is a typical behavior that can be very helpful early in your career, but can really get in your way as you seek to rise. Why is that true? First of all, if you're always seeking to please, you're going to have a hard time holding other people accountable for showing up for what they promised, because you're going to be afraid that maybe they won't like you. And I can attest to this, right? Um, that to please, I think I started a bit skeptical, but I can attest to that. When I was working in a resale store and I managed to work my way up to be a supervisor and kind of help out the management team, which, you know, I probably know had had no right to do, but they probably saw something in me that I didn't see in myself, which is fucking amazing. The issue that I had as well at that time, especially because I was managing the same group of people that I was working with on a part-time and full-time basis, I didn't create that distance. And the mistake that I made, I remember my manager actually telling me, I'm going to move you to another store so you can manage that store right and i was like no, no no i want to stay here and i and i think what he, that person meant was that if i would go to the other store i'd get more experience working there as an actual manager because the people there don't know me that then i could then come back later to that store and i could you know i could i could have a it, it's a different person entering the door but when you go from being a part-timer to full-timer to suddenly being part of the management it's hard to kind of break that break that bond that kind of you know because you're not you're not friends like that anymore in the workplace I'm now the superior. You have, I'm you. You're accountable to me. I'm accountable to you to some extent. 
but you know there's that weird kind of hierarchy there and obviously when you're working a part-time or working full-time you want to please everyone right you want to get on everyone because you want to get invited to stuff you want to be in the gossip you want to go to lunch with people you want to you know you just want to you just want to please people and stuff you just want to be a, a good colleague but then when you get into management you can't necessarily do that because you know if everyone likes you they everyone will, will probably won't respect you that's the thing you learn quite quickly and um, respect is something that is very hard to gain but really easy to lose and you don't want to get into that position either so i think even especially in the beginning of your career especially if you're interning or you're beginning as an assistant or whatever you may be doing just being a people pleaser just being nice to hang around is a bonus because for the most part you know especially if you're interning in places if everyone's most really experienced and i guess there'll be people in there that are really hard to work with and pains in the asses so you'll be quite a breath of fresh air to coming in right optimistic and nice and fresh and stuff but once you work your way up the ranks and you start, you know, getting some seniority, start getting some responsibility, start taking some, um, yeah, start taking some responsibility in, in budgets and all that stuff and meetings and plans and stuff, you have to kind of, you have to break away from that people-pleasing thing and just get back to doing the job and, and actually um, leading by example in that regard. And it's really hard to do, honestly. I don't envy it whatsoever. It's probably the hardest part of any kind of job, that kind of leadership element. And it's a part of the job that people don't really understand when they work in places. They're kind of usually like, oh, the manager doesn't do anything. What he's doing just sitting on his laptop. But honestly, that stress of having to deal with people, you know, essentially you're, a, you know, you're putting out fires every single day. You're the first line defender. Something goes wrong with somebody's life or work. It's very, very stressful, I would say, in that regard. You're going to have a hard time saying no to things and end up saying yes too often. Mm -hmm. And you're going to let people who will take advantage violate your own boundaries and waste a lot of time. I'm not saying here that you don't want to be a wonderful person, but being invested in everyone thinking you're wonderful and nice is, if you seek to rise, going to get in your way. It's great. If you can start small again by asserting boundaries in one way say to yourself right now i'm overcommitted so that in the next month when people ask me to join a new task force or something else i'm going to think about it very deliberately before i say yes awesome I'm awesome not only going to think about how would it please them but i'm going to think about how might it serve me is this really in my best interests that's a really good tip. But anyway, there's, there's loads on there. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. It's going to be loads to sit down. But I'll link it in the show notes for you to check it out. It's um, I, I, don't, I think it's five habits that hold women back at work. Um, so, but I guess you can apply it to all people, to all um, sexes, not specifically for women. I think these are things that we all kind of suffer from in the workplace. You know, it's kind of a testing environment. Um, but I really recommend you check it out. Some really good advice there. Some problems and then some actionable steps you can take towards it. Really nice bite-sized info from the BBC once again. So check that out.